Hey guys, Wes here. In this video, we're gonna build a chat application using Angular and Firebase. So we'll be using Firebase to both persist the data in our chat app as well as for user authentication. So as users, we'll be able to sign in to our app and then post messages for other users to see. So yeah, I think this app will be pretty fun to build. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so let's take a look at our chat app that we'll be building over the course of the next several videos. So first of all, we have a login screen here, but first we actually need to sign up. So we'll head to the sign up screen and you'll just apply an email and a password and a display name. So in this case, we'll just say West Oil. And if I sign up, we'll get taken over to our chat. And so we'll have a user list on the left side here. And if we type a message, we will get a message out to our chat feed here. Okay, so we can see that the time and the username that posted the message as well as of course the message. And yeah, we can uh, supply messages using uh, enter or clicking the send button. So we'll look at how to do that. And then yeah, chat's only useful of course if we have more than one user. So I'm gonna go ahead and fire up another window and we'll fire this up in incognito, that way we can maintain two sessions here. And so what I'm gonna do is sign up as another user and another username here. So we'll go ahead and sign up here. And as soon as we sign up, we can see that the new user gets added to our user list. And when the second user posts a message, we can also see that in the chat. And notice also that if you're the user posting the message, then in your session, you should see the um, post with this blue styling, whereas anyone else posting a message will get the default uh, gray and white styling here. So I think that's just kind of a nice touch. Um, the other thing that's pretty cool about this app is that you'll notice that if we type in a bunch of messages here, so let's go ahead and just maybe copy and paste, and we paste a bunch here and we paste a bunch over here. Okay, if I refresh the page, notice that the scroll bar starts at the bottom of the page. This is kind of what you would expect, I think, from a chat application that goes from top to bottom with the newest messages at the bottom. So something like uh, Google Chat, where the newest messages are at the bottom, and then you expect to have the default view be scrolled all the way to the bottom. So look at how to do that using a little bit of JavaScript. And one of the other nice things that we'll look at is that the query we're using to actually pull these messages back from the live Firebase database is only going to retrieve the latest 25 messages. So if I paste just like a whole bunch of messages here and then scroll up, you can see that we're only going to get the latest 25. And so that gets truncated. That way we don't have just an enormous number of potential messages coming back from the server trying to get rendered all at once. Um, if we were gonna get more complex with this app, we could definitely do something like infinite scroll where when we reach the top of the list here, we pull the database perhaps on something like Facebook where we're only looking at a certain amount of information at a time depending on how far up or down we scrolled. But that'll be a little bit outside the scope of this app, but it actually shouldn't be too difficult to implement once we work out everything else. So yeah, that's it. If we sign up um, another user, then we'll be able to see them in the user list as well, but I'll leave that to you to play around with. Let's go ahead and get started uh, writing the code to create this chat app. All right, so the first thing I'd like to do before we even write any code is just head to the drawing board in order to just create a, a quick sketch of the architecture of our application. I like to do that at the start of any project. I think it just helps uh, develop an intuition of the overall structure and kind of just gives us a template in order to allow us to think more clearly about the structure of our application as we start building it. So let's head over and create a sketch of our application. Okay, so since we will be working in Angular, we will have an app component, and this app component you can kind of think of as the shell for the remaining components that will comprise our application. So within our app component, I think we should separate it out into having a nav bar and then a router outlet. And I think that this makes sense because we want the nav bar to remain on every page of our application. And so we will render that at the app component level, and then just beneath it, we will call router outlet. And we'll define a set of routes such that when we hit different URLs in our app, we'll render different sort of parent components in the router outlet. 
So I can think of just three pages, if you will, that will represent the bulk functionality of our application. So it will have a signup component where a user will go to obviously sign up for an account and choose a username. And then we'll have a login component for authentication. And then the chat room component, which will of course be the bulk of our application, which will allow users to post messages and to see which other users are authenticated. So let's just think now about the chat room component itself. So the sign up and login components are relatively trivial in that they're just going to have forms in them and we'll use the forms to post back to Firebase in order to authenticate or log in a user. But our chat room component will break down a little bit further. Well, I think the contents of our chat room con component will basically consist of a user list on the left side of the screen here. So this user list component I'm picturing as being just a container for our individual user components. So the user components themselves will be more or less just presentational components which will just display the username if the user is authenticated. And then on the right side of the screen we'll have two separate components. We'll have one for the feed and the feed component will serve as a wrapper to contain our chat messages. So we'll have a presentational component to represent our message object as well. And then finally we'll have a chat form component whose function will be to essentially just contain this input field that a user can type a chat message into and the chat form will also contain a button that when we click it will post um, the message to our feed component and we'll also wire up an on key pressed on enter so that, the, so that a user can just hit enter and also have it post. So as we work through this you may identify places in which um, you may want to structure your application a little bit differently. Perhaps you may want to break the components down even further. But I think as a starting point, this is going to work great and it'll give us enough structure that we can kind of think about each of these components independently and have a relatively appropriate level of separation of concerns here. So let's head back to the console and generate some of these components. Okay, I'll be using the Angular CLI to bootstrap this application. So you want to make sure that's installed and you can check that with ng-v here. I'm also going to be using TypeScript, of course. So we can check that with tsc-v and of course we'll be using node so you can check that with node-v if you need to install any of those things check the description for some links and instructions on how to do that and I'm going to be moving a little bit more quickly through this video series than some of my previous Angular videos in part because this is I would consider this maybe a little bit more of an intermediate level project but mostly because there's just a lot more code to cover in this particular application so if you're building an Angular app for the first time this would definitely work but you might get um, more out of developing something smaller first like the gallery application that I built in a previous video in any case, let's go ahead and get started, and we're going to use the CLI to generate our new chat project. So I'm going to call it base chat. And so this is just going to create a bunch of files here, and it's going to install some packages in a node modules directory. Okay, with that complete, let's head over into our editor, and I'll be using Visual Studio Code for this series, but of course feel free to use whatever editor you're most comfortable with. And the first thing that I'm going to do is inside the source directory here, inside of our app directory, I'm going to go ahead and create a new folder called services. And this is where we're going to put the various services that we're using in this app. In the source directory itself, I'm actually going to create a new file called routes, routes.ts. So we'll be using the Angular router in order to visit three separate pages, if you will, of this application. So we'll have the chat room, the login form, and the signup form. And so now let's go ahead and generate the different components that we talked about that we'll be implementing in this app. So we'll head back to the console and we'll cd into the directory. And I'm going to use the shorthand syntax from Angular CLI. So that will be ngGC for generate component. And so we'll have our chat form component and then GC the chat room component. Okay, and then we have our feed. So this is where all the messages will go. So we'll go ahead and generate a component for the message. And then we need one for the login form. And one for the sign up form. We'll have one for our navigation bar, so we'll just call that navbar. We'll have a component for our user list, so that will contain the list of users who are using our application, and then user item, and user item will of course just represent it, 
an individual user listing in that list. And then we'll go ahead and generate the two services that we'll be using. So for that NGGS, and the first one will be our auth service for authentication. And the second one will be our chat service. So that's gonna handle all of our messaging. Okay, and while we're at the command line, I need to go ahead and install a few more packages. So we're gonna npm install dash dash save Firebase and Angular Fire 2. So this will be, of course, to interact with our Firebase backend. So we have the, um, the regular vanilla, if you will, Firebase SDK, and then the Angular Fire 2 package, which wraps a lot of the Firebase functionality and allows us to work with observables in a lot of cases. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and head back into the code now. And what I'm gonna do is the CLI drops these services in the app directory. I'm just gonna go ahead and move the four files that were generated here. So the two spec files for each of the services and the TypeScript class themselves into the services directory here. All right, cool. Um, the first thing I'd like to do is to head into the routes file here. So our routes.ts file. And I'm gonna go ahead and paste our routes here and then explain what's happening. So this should be sign up form component actually and sign up form, sign up form component. Okay, so we're gonna import routes from at Angular slash router. So that's going to give us the ability to visit various pages of our application. Correct one more typo here. Um, to visit various pages of our application depending on our URL. And so when our URL path is sign up, then we're going to activate the sign up form component. Likewise, for login and chat, we will activate the corresponding Angular components for those parts of our application as well when we visit the base URL of our app slash any one of these paths. And then our default path, we will redirect to the login component. We could get more complex in our routes here in the future by supplying a can activate property here and then having a, a sort of authentication guard. That's something that I implemented in the Angular Firebase gallery set of videos that I made previously. So if you're interested in doing that with this app, just go ahead and take a look there. And it might be something that I implement here in this project in a later video as well. All right, let's head over into our app.module file. So if we find that here, should be in the source directory. You can see we're importing all the components that we generated. We also need to go ahead and make sure that we import our router module and forms module here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and paste those imports here. So forms module is coming from at angular slash forms and router from at angular slash router. Then we'll head down and we'll, we'll place those inside of our imports here. Okay, cool. And on router module, we actually need to call dot for root and pass it our app routes. And we need to import our app routes here. And I like to do that just at the bottom of our list of components that get imported. And then we also need to import our services. So I've imported our chat service and our auth service, which are now in our services directory. And for that, we need to list them as providers. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and bring in the Angular Fire modules. So I'll place those up towards the top here. And so we're bringing in Angular Fire module from Angular Fire 2, then Angular Fire database module from Angular Fire 2 slash database, and the auth module from Angular Fire 2. So this is the current syntax for Angular Fire. I know that recently, they kind of broke out the various modules, so this may look different if you're using a either newer or previous version of Angular Fire. For this video, this is the current namespacing for the various modules that we'll be using. So I'll scroll down here, and I'm gonna go ahead and paste those in our imports here as well. Okay, so our Angular Fire module, we're gonna call this initialize app on it and pass our environment.firebase. Um, object and so this is actually going to be our connection to our Firebase backend. So first we need to actually import environment. So let's do that here. We already have that file that the uh, CLI created for us. This is going to be in environments slash environment. And if you look over here, uh, here's the directory, and then here's our environment.typescript file and our environment.prod.ts file. And so the way this is going to work is we're going to have our Firebase property here. And so 
in both of these files, in the environment and the, in the prod file, if you prefer, go ahead and do that here as well. This is where we'll put our connection data from Firebase. So let's head over to the Firebase console and create a new app. And so if you're creating a new project from scratch, just click add project. I've added a project here called chat demo. We click on it. Once you create your project, you'll get taken to the console here. And we need to select add Firebase to your web app in order to grab this connection string. And so we're going to grab this, these configuration properties here from this config variable. I'm going to go ahead and copy those and we're going to paste them here. And the linter is going to be upset about all these double quotes. So if you're using Vim surround, if you use Vim key bindings, you can actually just uh, CS and then in this case, double quotes, single quotes, and that will change the surrounding characters for whatever string you're working with. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that for each of these. All right, cool. So now I can copy this and we can paste that into our other file as well. Okay, so now this should provide a connection to the registered Firebase project. And if we head back into our Firebase console and we click on authentication, and then we click on sign in method, we wanna specify that we'll, we'll sign into this app with email and password. So just ensure that this is enabled and then we can save it here. And then back in our database, You'll notice that I'm getting this warning that the security rules are defined as public, meaning that anyone can read or write to our database. So this is just temporary, but you'll want to set read and write to true. I think it's just easier while you develop. That way you don't have to um, log in and authenticate yourself in your application in order to read and write from the database. Once we get the authentication set up and we register as a new user, we'll set this back to the default values, ensuring that we need to actually be authenticated to read or write from our database. But for now, we'll leave them both as true, allowing us to read and write without authentication. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and minimize this for now, and I'll save our app.module file, and we'll close it here, and we'll close our routes file, which is complete. And let's go ahead and just start up a basic server that we can keep running as we develop. So back at the console here, I'm going to create a new console and cd into the directory. And now we're just going to ng serve. And so this will compile all of our TypeScript and then serve up the app on a development server at localhost port 4200. And now if I just fire up a new instance of Chrome here and head over to localhost 4200, you can see we get the default Angular CLI welcome to app message here. Also note that we are, of course, uh, because we set up our routes already, we're, we are redirecting to the login component, but of course we don't have anything here yet and we haven't actually implemented the um, router module in, the, in any template yet. So let's go ahead and minimize that and we'll take care of that next. So I'm going to head into our app.component HTML file and we're gonna remove the um, boilerplate code here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to have a div of class chatroom. I'm going to create a wrapper for our navbar here. And for sure, both the markup and the style sheets for this application um, would definitely benefit from being a little bit more cleaned up. So for the first run through, um, they'll definitely work for our purposes. But if you wanted to make this a more sustainable sort of development project, you'd want to take a closer look at revising some of the, some of the uh, markup that I have here. In any case, we're going to render our app navbar here, and then we're going to place our router outlet here. And so any of the pages that we'll be rendering using our router that we specified in our routes file, they're going to get rendered here um, within our chat room wrapper, but under our app navbar and the div that wraps it. And then our app component TS is just sort of a simple presentational type component that just simply stores the title for our app and so we'll call it base chat. I don't know if base chat is already a thing or not. I'm just using it as an example name uh, for this app. It's not associated with any particular company or existing application. All right, cool. So you know what happens when we hit the root URL of our application, we go to the login form. So let's go once again, just quickly revisit our routes. And so we visit our login form when we hit the base URL. Otherwise we hit this chat room component or sign up component or if we go to login directly, we hit our login component. 
So let's go ahead and create the templates for each of these, and then we'll sort of work our way down into more granular components from there. So let's head over into our chat room component. So I'm just gonna go ahead and paste the template here. And so I've got this main content div that is wrapping our user list and feed. And then outside of that, I've got this chat form wrapper, which wraps our app chat form. Again, you could break this down into a couple more components and make it even more granular. But for a first run through, I think that this should serve our purposes and um, it's broken down enough where we don't have like a million components to cover here, but still keeping the code relatively organized. So yeah, our app user list obviously will contain a list of users and our feed will contain a list of messages in our chat room. And then the chat form here is just the input box and the send button that we use to post messages to our feed. Note that I have this syntax here with a hashtag scroller and we'll look at why that's implemented a little bit later, but in a sense, this is going to be used in order for us to identify which DOM element we want to apply the JavaScript to in our component in order to scroll this DOM element, if you will, to scroll to the bottom. We'll take a closer look at that when we get to working on the feed component. I'm just gonna go ahead and save this, and then let's go take a look in the browser. So I'm gonna make the font a little bit larger here so you can see that the we're getting a message from the nav bar that it works and the login form works. It's where, where we are uh, redirected by default. If we visit slash chat, we can see the messages from the other three components that we just looked at. Just to double check, we can look at our sign up component as well and see that that's working. All right, so, so far so good. Let's keep the chat page open while we work for a little while. So our chat room is also just gonna be kind of a presentational component. Um, all of the logic in our application, if you will, will be occurring inside of either our app feed or our chat form uh, with regards to the chat functionality. So let's actually go into our chat form. First of all, this will be what we're using to actually post messages to Firebase. So let's go into chatform.html and I'll go ahead and close some other windows here for now. And I'm gonna replace the boilerplate code here with an input and a button. And so I've got a class here just to style the input. And then we've got this two-way binding for a message model. And then we've got a data binding to a key down event here in which we'll write a function in this component handle submit that will basically handle the event that when we click enter, we actually submit this form. So that's just kind of a nice feature. That way the user won't necessarily have to click on the send button every time they want to send a message, but can hit enter as you would find in most modern chat applications. And then we have a button with another class just for some styling here. And then we'll bind an on click event to a method send in our component, which will just post the, the message to our live Firebase database. And if we take a quick look at the page, we can see that the input is now getting rendered, but it's not going to do anything, of course, because we don't have a send event. So we'll get a warning if we try to click it or an error. And um, as I'm typing buttons here, since we, since we were binding to the uh, key down event, we can see that we're generating errors every time I press a key in the input as well. So we know that at least it's doing something here. <laughs> Let's go ahead and try to wire up some of the functionality for this form. So I'm just going to minimize this and we'll head into our chat form component TypeScript file. And so what I wanna do is use the chat service that we'll build in order to handle all the communication with Firebase from this component. And so I'm just gonna go ahead and import that here. With that imported, we can use dependency injection placing a reference to a private chat service in our constructor. So say private chat is of type chat service. And then the methods that we implement in the component level here are going to be very thin. So we'll have a send method. Of course, this is for when we want to post a message. And we're simply going to call upon the chat service. We'll write a, we'll write a method there that will actually send the message. And we can bind it to this.message. And for that, we need to go ahead and create that property here. We'll say it's of type string. And so this message property corresponds to the two-way binding that we have from ng model here. So what we input into the box will essentially be passed back up from this uh, the view layer here up into the component layer. And the data that's in this input form will bind to the message property here. 
So we're going to pass that message to our chat service in order to actually post this message to the Firebase database. And so for that, we'll just wrap a thin method here called send that we can call from the component level. And then we're going to write a handle submit method here, which will take an event. If you recall, this was bound to the key down event. So every time we press a key down, we're going to call handle submit here and pass it the particular event that has occurred. And here we want to check to see if the key that was pressed was the enter button. And so we can say that by looking at the event key code. And we'll say if that's equal to 13, which corresponds to the enter key on a standard keyboard. Then we're going to call our send method. Likewise, if the user just simply clicks the send button, the send method also gets called. So whether they hit the enter key or click the send button, the same send method gets called, passing the contents of this chat input into our send function here, which calls our service layer in order to actually post that message to Firebase. So that's really that all that's gonna go into this actual form. Let's go ahead and head over into our chat service and write the send message method. So first of all, since we're visiting our chat service for the first time, I'm going to go ahead and make all of our imports. And so since it is a service, we will make it injectable. So we need to import injectable. As you can see, we've already injected it into our chat form component. And then I'm going to import the various AngularFire imports. So AngularFire database and AngularFire list observable from AngularFire2 slash database. And then AngularFire off from AngularFire2 slash off. Then observable from rxjs slash observable. And we need this because AngularFire makes use of observables. And then we're going to have a chat message model that I'll need to write. So I'm going to move our off service up here. Of course, we need to import the authentication service. And then I'm also going to import vanilla Firebase with import stars Firebase. Let's go ahead and create our chat message model. So our chat message model, this is going to represent the structure of the message object that we'd like to that we'd like to have Firebase store for us. So I'm going to go ahead and in the app directory here create a new folder called models. And we're going to create a new file called chat-message.model.ts. And I'm gonna go ahead and paste in the model code here. So this is gonna be a pretty simple, plain object. Everything that we have here is gonna be a string except for the time sent. First of all, we'll have a key, and this will just correspond to a Firebase key on this object, uh, which should be unique. And then we want to store the email, the username, and the message itself, and then the time the message was sent with each message that gets posted to our feed. We could get more elaborate here, store more data, and have you know lots of other interesting things going on. But for our purposes, this should suffice as a place to get started. While we're in the models, I'm going to go ahead and create one more. And we'll just call that user.model.ts, and this will be our user model. So I'm going to go ahead and paste that code here. All right, so here's our user. We'll have a user ID, email, username, and password and then we'll have a string representing the status of a user. You could make this a boolean, like is online or is offline or something, but I figured I'd make it a string here because we might have a few other options. We might have like is idle or like a do not disturb status or something like that. Um, and in that case, you might even make a separate object status. That's a little bit outside the scope of the first version of this application. But in fact, if you want to have a more elaborate presence aspect to your chat application, then you may want to think a little bit about how to structure um, the status of a user. In our case, we'll just keep it as a string. Okay, so we've got these two models created. I'm gonna head back into our chat service. And we came here because we needed to write a send message method. And we'll pass this method, of course, the message that we wanna post. And if you recall, this is coming from the input form. So the input form is going to pass our send message method here, its contents as a string. And I wanna post a few things. I wanna post the timestamp. So we will have a method to get the current time. So I'll just call that get timestamp. We'll have the email address of the posting user. And so for that, we're going to call 
the email on the user object and we'll have a an array of chat messages so we're going to have chat messages is equal to this dot get messages we're going to write a method in order to get all of the current messages and then what we're going to do is simply push a new message onto chat messages And so the message body itself will represent what's coming from the form. Again, that's what we pass into this function here. Our time sent will be the timestamp for which we need to write the method to return. Oops. Oops, and I had a small s there. And then the username should correspond to this dot username and we'll look at how to implement that in a minute here and then our email address will be the email from the user object that we need to create so i realize we haven't created oops, most of the functionality here yet um, just want to show you what the sort of structure for the send message method is and so clearly we need to create some of these properties on this class here so first of all we'll have our chat messages object and this is going to be a firebase list observable of type any And then the individual chat message that we're going to post will be a chat message. In fact, this could be a chat message array. Then we'll have a username, which will be an observable string. And for now, we'll make our user type any. I think that this is firebase.user. Um, but for now, we'll just make it type any. And then in the constructor for this service, first of all, I'm going to inject our Angular Fire services. So private DB will be an Angular Fire database. And we'll have an Angular Fire off instance here. And then what we're going to do is we're going to make use of the auth state observable that's on Angular Fire auth here. I'm just going to correct a typo here. So it should be AF auth. And we're going to use that to set um, this user object. So we'll do that just simply by subscribing to that auth state observable. So this dot af auth, scroll up here, dot auth state, dot subscribe. And then we'll write an arrow expression here. And what I'm going to say is that if what we get back is not undefined, in other words, we get something back and it's not null, then we'll set our user object to it gets returned here. And I'm just gonna add some white space so that the linter is happy. And then just kind of clean this up a little bit as well. Likewise, what we'll do in the future in this uh, service is to, is to write a method in the constructor that sets our username as well. But we'll need to look at how we're actually storing the users that sign up for our application inside of our live database, which is running sort of in parallel, if you will, with the Firebase authentication side of things. So get timestamp will be a method that we need to write. And all that we want to do here is to kind of return something in a valid date format that we can then um, parse using an Angular pipe in the template. And so the way that this is going to work is going to have a constant value for a new date. And then I'm going to have constant values for both the date and the time. And then we're going to return those together. So we'll take a look at how to do that. So we'll have a constant date. And that's going to be now. And we'll just use UTC time for this. So we're going to get the full year. And then we're going to add a slash. And you can see we're just going to construct the format of a date. And then we'll now get UTC month. And I believe that's zero indexed. So for instance, January would be like zero. So we need to add one to the value that gets returned from that method and add another slash here. And then we want to get the date, which gets the day of the month. Okay, so that represents the date aspect of our timestamp. And then let's represent the time. So get UTC hours, get UTC minutes, and get UTC seconds. And go ahead and remove the plus one here that I copied and pasted and replace our slashes with colons. And then we can simply return date plus a space plus a time. 
All right, there may be a more elegant way to do this. Um, I just wanted to, to get something that works, and so this should work. So that takes care of our get timestamp method, and now I need to take care of this get messages method. So get timestamp was purely JavaScript, just kind of going out and rendering a timestamp to place on our message. But the get messages method, this actually needs to talk to Firebase. So that's a little bit more interesting. So it's going to be of type Firebase list observable, and we had it as a uh, array of chat message. And so we're going to write a query here. I'm just going to comment just to explain what we're doing. We're going to write a query to create our um, list binding. So like our feed, how do we say this? Uh, message feed binding. And so we're going to use Angular Fire database in order to return an observable that we can subscribe to here. So we'll return this.db.list. So we have the ability to return an object or a list. And it's nice to be able to return a list to work with when we have a set of objects. So we'll have, we'll look in uh, messages. And then here we can actually specify a query. And so we can, for instance, limit to last. So say we want to just get the last 25 messages that were posted, and we want to order by key, true. So you can imagine, depending on the type of application you were you were running, like how you wanted to order a list of observable objects, you know, a list of, uh, in this case, messages coming back from Firebase. Like say you had an application where you had some type of uh, voting functionality and you wanted to display posts with the highest votes first, then we could write a query to order by that particular property, perhaps, as we display them. In our case, we want to only grab the last 25 chat messages that were posted. That way we don't render like an enormous amount out to the page. And also we want to order by key. Again, if we wanted to add more complexity to our application, we could dynamically generate how many messages we're showing, just um, implementing a sort of pagination type feature. But in our case, we're just going to grab the last 25 Okay, so send message should now be complete. I'm just going to go ahead and fix a typo here. And then just to verify, I'm going to console log called send message. Let's take a look if this is working. We'll head over into our app and we're just going to type in hello here. Uh, and so we're getting an error on the uh, key down because we haven't written handle submit properly. So. Let's go ahead and minimize this. And I'll head back into our chat form component.ts. And it's because we have a typo here where I said hand submit. So this needs to be handle submit, first of all. And then we'll head back into the app. And I can type without errors now. And if we type in hello and click send, so we're getting cannot read property email of undefined. And so, yeah, what's happening here, if we, um, you can see that this is coming from our chat service. So if we come back down here, we head into our chat service. Notice that I have a constant email here and I'm setting it to this user object dot email. This user object is only going to get set if we are authenticated. And so, so far I'm not authenticated. And if we just want to see sort of a bare bones, non-authenticated version of this working, I can just actually comment out what's the code that's in our uh, constructor here. And then we'll come down to this.email and I'll comment this out as well. And we'll set it to a string just to display. And let's see if, let's see if we can get it to post with the test email. And now we're getting an error that the argument contains an undefined property in messages.username. So let's go ahead and minimize this and we can kind of mock that out as well. Scroll up. And yeah, I wasn't setting the username yet. And so what we can do is go ahead and mock this property out as well. So we can comment this out for now. And let's see if we can get it to work now. So uh, we didn't get any errors logged out to the console here, and you can see that we hit our console log called send message. And in fact, if we head over to the Firebase console, we should be able to see that the message gets posted 
in a messages child here. So we're posting that hard-coded string for the test at example.com and the message as well as the test username here. Once we have all of our authentication set up, of course, the email and username will be valid and correspond to whoever is, is posting this. But we have confirmed that we can post to Firebase from a form, and so that's a good first step. So I'm gonna go ahead and minimize this. And I think it would be interesting at this point to go ahead and get our feed working. That way when we post messages here using the form, that we can see them out in our feed. So I'm gonna go ahead and minimize the window. And we'll leave these hard-coded values in here now until we revisit this and wire up authentication. So let's head over into our feed component and we'll visit feed component.ts. And I'll go ahead and paste our imports here. And so we're going to bring in on init and on changes from Angular Core. And then we're going to bring in our chat service, our chat message model, and observable from RxJS. So our feed will have a property for that, and it will just be of type any for now. And we can go back and make this more explicit later. In our constructor, we want to inject an instance of our chat service. And I'm going to do a few things here. I'm going to implement on changes. And we can, um, now that we have implemented this interface, the compiler is going to let us know that we need to have a method uh, ng on changes called. Awesome. And then we're just going to do something really simple here. We're going to use the chat service to set our feed. So we'll say this.feed is equal to this.chat. And we'll have a get messages method. And we're also going to do that on changes. So if I hit F12 on get messages, that'll take us over to our get messages method that we wrote in our chat service. And so you can see that get messages will return an observable, a Firebase list observable to be exact. And so you may be wondering, do we need to subscribe to this? And the answer is yes, we do need to subscribe to this. Um, but I want to show you a kind of neat way that you can do that actually in the template. So let's go into the feed component.html. I'm going to go ahead and remove the boilerplate code. I'm going to create a wrapper div here, just call it feed. And then we're going to have an ng4. And so ng4, star ng4, this allows us to loop over one of our properties and create multiple instances of a DOM element here. And so we're going to create multiple divs here by saying let messages, or say let message of feed, we'll say. And then we're going to pipe async with class message. And this pipe async here, this syntax, this is actually going to subscribe to our feed object, which is getting set here, our feed observable, which is getting set here when we make a call to get messages. And so I could subscribe here in the component level. Oops. Sorry, I could subscribe here by calling dot subscribe and then I wouldn't need to um, subscribe at the template level. But this is just kind of nice terse syntax for subscribing to this feed observable. And then of course, inside of our loop here, I want to call our app message component. And that app message will take an input chat message. And it's gonna be set to the message. That is an individual instance of what's getting looped over in our observable set. So we'll just go ahead and close this. And so just so that's clear, this chat message input that we're passing into this child component app message, this is coming from our observable feed. And the, obs the observable feed here contains an array of our message objects. And so for each message, we are going to pass that message into an instance of our app message component via this one-way data input binding. So if we go back once again into our feed component file, where we have this feed, which I could set to a Firebase, should probably be explicit here, Firebase list observable of chat message array. And for that, I'll need to import Firebase list observable from AngularFire2 slash database. I'm gonna go ahead and do that. So I just copy that import from our chat service and I'll paste it over here in our feed. And we can get rid of the reference to the database. Okay. So we have our Firebase list observable, which is going to be an array of chat messages. And so we are going to 
get those messages and set it to our feed object that we're going to loop over inside of our template and pass each instance of that chat of that chat message into our message component here and we're going to specifically pass its input via this chat message binding so hopefully that makes sense we'll head over into our message component here now and we'll go ahead and create an input binding to that message so that it can receive it so inside of our message component.ts file I'm going to go ahead and paste the imports here so we're bringing in a component on init and input, which we just talked about, and then our services and then our chat message object. And for now, we won't need to inject anything into our constructor. But as you might imagine, in a little while, we're actually going to want to inject our authentication service. So that way we can actually determine what user is posting this message in order to style it differently, depending on whether or not it's the user's own message or it's a message coming from a separate user. In any case, let's just go ahead and bind the simple properties um, that make up the presentational aspects of this component. So let's go ahead and pass chat message as this dot chat message to our on init method, and we'll go ahead and create that here. And if you recall, that's our input. So the way that we actually do that is we have this spiral input chat message, and we set it to a type chat message. And now let's think about the various things that we want to display on each message in this component. So we're going to have a user email, perhaps, um, which will be a string. We'll have the username as a string. We'll have the message content, string, and the timestamp, which will be a date. OK, so we'll have a few more properties in this component. Probably in the next video, we'll look at, for instance, whether or not it is the user's own message, which will have a type Boolean. And that, that's going to allow us to dynamically style the, um, the message. But in any case, we'll just go ahead and start with the basics here. And so we'll set this dot message content equal to chat message dot message. So that's the string that gets passed from the input form and represents the content of each chat message. And then we'll have the timestamp so you go to chat message dot time sent. Should have probably mapped these to be one to one here and, and named everything the same. But um, in any case, that's something that we could clean up later. And for some reason, I accidentally deleted that property. OK, and then we'll have the user email. So equal to chat message dot email and then the username is the username property on our chat message object okay so so far so good so when our message component is initialized in other words when an instance of a message component is initialized we're going to set the various properties that we have on it here so the email name content and timestamp to properties that are on this object chat message which gets input into this message component just to revisit that once again you can see that we are passing it uh, via this one-way data binding here chat message inside of our feed okay so I'm gonna go ahead and save the feed and we'll save this and let's go ahead and take a look at our page So it looks like our feed component disappeared here, but we're not actually getting anything out on the page. I'm also not seeing any errors, so let's go ahead and see if we can debug this. So I'm going to head back into our app here. And what I'd like to do is to go into the feed component.ts file and just go ahead and console.log feed initializing and go ahead and take a look. And so you can see we're hitting that. Okay, and so get messages is getting called. And so if I F12 in to get messages, and we can go ahead and console.log inside of what's getting returned here, or just before it returns, calling get messages. And so that is getting called. So now what I'll do is I'll go back into our feed component.html and we'll write out just a hard-coded string here, 
So there's a paragraph tag. And go ahead and take a look at the page. So we can see message here, which corresponds to this ng4 loop, which means that we're getting one back. So if I type in another thing here, okay, so we're getting another one back. And it says message works twice, so that's actually interesting. So let's go back and take a look at our message component.html. Ah, uh, obviously, so I just haven't filled out the message component yet. Sorry about that. Okay, I've forgotten what I haven't haven't coded up yet. So um, let's just go ahead and build this really quickly. So we're gonna have a message container. And let's just build something like ultra simple first. So for instance, I will have a paragraph tag here and we'll, we'll have something for each of the various properties that we wrote. So we'll put out the username. And I'm going to go ahead and make this a little bit shorter here. We'll have the timestamp and the message content. And we'll just look at that for now. Let's go ahead and go back into our feed component and I'll remove this uh, hard-coded message here and so let's take a look at the page so yeah we're getting the username out here test user as well as hello and then the test user saying hey if we type another message here we can see that we are getting another message so yeah we can see that the basic functionality in terms of posting messages to Firebase and then querying them and having them get returned to our page here is more or less working one thing you'll notice that if we type messages here into our form and hit enter, notice that the form itself is not clearing. So that would be sort of the expected behavior for a chat application, that when you post the message, click send or hit enter, it posts the message and the text in the input field disappears. So let's go ahead and fix that really quickly. If we head into our chat form component, .ts file, when we send our message, from here, after we've called send message, I want to set this.message back to just an empty string. And so if we take a look now, and I scroll down and I hit something, I hit enter, uh, you can see that the bo box has emptied. And I'll go ahead and make this uh, font a little bit smaller here so that we can see that when we post, we're posting a new message and our input form clears. All right, so the functionality is starting to come together. If you've made it this far, then we have completed, I'd say maybe 30% or so of the functionality of this app. So that's great, but it does look pretty horrible right now because we don't have any style sheets set up. So the first thing that we're gonna do in the very next video is to make our application look a little bit more decent by applying some style sheets. And we're actually gonna make extensive use of Flexbox CSS in order to both make this application more responsive and also make the layout kind of clean and allow us to do things like have a static input form that stays at the bottom of the screen, scroll our feed independently, and have a static header that stays at the top. So yeah, I think it'll be some uh, pretty cool stuff, a nice clean design, and the CSS won't even really be all that complicated. So stay tuned for the next video when we pick it up here.